The traffic in New York City is ridiculous. Who knew? And Ebro like left in a half and puff and he blew his little <laughs> house down. Do you guys love her new single with Chris oh, Brown? Thank you. Body on me. Body on me. Can you, can you talk about a little bit about the collaboration? How you guys linked up? Body the on concept? Me. Yeah, okay. So let's start from the T-O-P. Start there. Right, so I'm sitting there recording it, and in my head I'm thinking, I need to. Uh, this is the first time I'm gonna release a record around the whole world because the first time I released any music was about two, three years ago, and it was only in specific regions. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Like it was only in like UK, Germany, Australia, da 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 da. For some reason, we skipped over the USA. Yeah, who needs it? <laughs> And uh, no, there was a reason behind the scenes, but um, in all honesty, I think that the reason why I waited this long was because my time is now. I know and, that's right, goddammit. And it's all about timing for me, and um, I wanted to not rush. So anyway, in the studio, approaching every record like it's my last, and um, every time I kind of was singing, I just thought, I didn't want this to be about who can I get on this album to get attraction. Like, who can I get on it? Ah. I wanted it to be about content and consistency and a solid piece of work where I can sit back and say, that is what I can put my face on, you know? Right, right, right. And next door was Chris Brown and he was working on some music and I was recording this song and I thought, you know what? If I had to ask anybody to do anything, it's gonna be him because I'm a fan of his music, regardless of whatever. I'm a fan of his music. Hell yeah. And so that's how I look at people. I don't judge, I don't think about things that they've done. I think about the present and the here and the now. And so that was how it started. And I went into the studio and I said, hey, I have this song for you. And um, I think it's time we start doing something together. He said, I play it. I played it, he loved it. And there and then he recorded it. Boom, and it was that easy. It was actually that easy, but um, for once, I can say that this collaboration was real genuine. Like there wasn't any management involved. It wasn't like record labels or anything like that. It was kind of like me going up to him. He said, yeah, yeah sat down and I watched him record it. It was like old school ways. It was, it felt nice. That's tight, that's tight. Yeah. Who, um, so you've been working on the album. So you can, can you share a little bit, maybe give us some more Of course I can. This yes? is why I do this okay, chat, okay. so we can like tell right, you what's right, happening. Right, right. Rita, likes to, Rita likes to share. Yeah, I'm I'm too sure. Only with you guys though, yeah, only with you guys. Yeah, she loves to share with us. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I mean, I we, wanted... saw, we, we saw it, I mean, this sparked a bunch of rumors with you and Wiz. Everybody's like, oh my God, Rita and Wiz are dating. No, no, no we're not dating. We've just <laughs> made an amazing song together. And amazing. It's, and it's called Religion. And, um, <laughs> Um, it kind of comes from a place where you're telling a guy tonight, I'm gonna make you my religion. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's, that, that, for me, the aim of this album was this. Okay, my first worldwide release, what am I saying? What am I doing? Who, who is this person? And I just wanted to make an album dedicated to the people that have helped me in my life, like my best friends. This album is for my best friends because they're my favorite people. There's four of them. I count them on one hand. And um, there's just been times with any everything, with music, with the way I express myself through my clothes, the way I kind of act, the way that, you know, the attraction that's happened with kind of like what I'm wearing, all this and that, this, that. It's all been a strategic plan for this moment right here to release music. And for some reason, you know, I've attracted kind of 
attention in different formats, not just music, you know? And I think that nowadays, the way music's going and social media, it's not just all about, sometimes it is, there's artists that just release an album and it's like, this is my album. But then there's artists that kind of do a bit of everything and that, that, that's the type of artist I am. I saw on Instagram you like New York Fashion Week. I couldn't resist you. Yeah, I'm I tried here. to not come here. Why? But then I had a show tonight, so I thought I might as well go to the show. That's hilarious. Were yeah. you like, oh, you know, I'm already known for fashion. I'm in my music zone. I don't need to show up at Fashion Week. Uh -huh. And then you end up here <laughs> during Fashion Week. Oh, it's so funny that my show is during Fashion Week. Perfect. No, um, yeah, obviously you can't turn your back on that. I mean, it's it's kind of it's like my. My affair, my music is my husband and fashion's like my affair. So you know? Peter, we gathered a bunch of questions for the audience because remember today it's all about the fans. Yes, yes, it's so all can, about the fans. Can we, get, can we get to some of these right now and shout out some of these Yeah, yeah, let's get to that because we also are going to have Rita take pictures with everyone so we need yeah. to make sure we yeah. are so lit. Um, yeah, go ahead. Right, let's hold on, let me see, let me see. Make sure they're appropriate questions, Laura. Yes, they are. Okay, well, this is for Melissa. Melissa from the Bronx. Hi. Melissa, okay, Melissa is saying, is there a foundation or a charity that you work with that is very dear to your heart that you can share with us? Melissa, um, there is. My mother is a breast cancer survivor, and so I do a lot with breast cancer research. And um, in the UK, there's like a marathon. I don't know if they, you guys have that over here. Um, Pink Pride's coming up, so um, it's all about that. that. That's my main kind of focus, just because I experienced it personally. Um, so that, that, that's what I work on. That's fantastic. All right. We have one from, ooh, I think his name is Bennett. His writing's a little tight, but Bennett? Bennett, yeah. Bennett, okay, Bennett, Hi, Bennett. is saying, uh, What's up? Who are some of the strong female artists you've listened to growing up, and how have they influenced this project? Great question, because growing up, people, you know, you might not believe me, but I was like a kind of little kind of punk, grungy, rock and roll-y kind of fan growing up, you know, and, and then but don't get me wrong, I was influenced by just powerful women, you know, women that were kind of gorgeous, comfortable in their skin. Obviously a big one for me was Gwen Stefani. Uh, growing up, but it was more when she was in her no doubt phase. Right, right, right. And then she kind of went and did her whole thing. Um, and then it's like Blondie, The Runaways. Um, Were you an Amy Winehouse fan? 100%. Yeah. I was more an Amy Winehouse fan because growing up in London, she was just literally what London was all about. Like how she spoke, how she even sounded in the, in the songs. It was kind of like, that's just how it is. Did you get to watch a documentary? I did, yeah. I did cry. I did Ugh, cry. I cried three yeah. times watching it. I had a personal experience with her actually a few times because she lived down the street from me and we always used to go to the same Jamaican spot. By the way, Jamaica's my favorite food. Like, rest in peace, jerk chicken is my favorite food. Okay. And so they have this place in, um, in London and she was sitting outside it and I think it was her favorite restaurant too. And she was, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what was happening, but she was definitely like very vocal, yeah. shouting around. And I'm just looking at her like, Amy. <laughs> yeah. And I just thought, whoa. And she sat there and she just spoke to me about like life and like her parents. And like, it was almost like I, I've, I've, like I've known her for so long, but we just met, by the way. Um, I think that just goes to show what kind of character she is. She's just one of those open people. Anyway, then a few days later, that's when she passed away. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That is yeah. wild. I, um, isn't her birthday today? It is? Yeah. yeah oh my God, R.I.P. Amy. Yes, yeah. Amy and Wow, that. that's crazy. Isn't it weird when someone, even if you don't know someone very well, but you meet them and then they pass away right after? It's a very weird experience. I think when you're creative, as a creative person, like we're not meant to be, I think, that sane. I think as creative people, we always kind of find a way to ex express ourselves. And some people do it through things like, you know, unfortunate substances and sh shit that you can't necessarily control all right let's go to i think it's i think it's talene from new Tareen. jersey hello, hello okay Hi. she says uh you have accomplished so much already in your Thank career you. uh, what is your proudest moment my proudest moment was performing at the 2015 oscars yeah that was a good one that was the thing I'll never forget. I mean, we're talking like a billion people, dude, like watching this one TV show of this golden statue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was a big deal for me. I definitely threw up before I went on stage. Okay. Legit? Like, 
like moments away? No, 150%. I like, get nervous every time I perform. Like tonight, I'm going to be nervous, even though it's like 1,500 capacity venue or something like that. I have this 10 second panic attack every show. I was going to ask you, do you have like a little ritual that you do right before you hit the stage? Yeah, I can't have like people around me like drinking and partying. Like I've, it's got to be calm. Like I've got to like know what yeah. I'm doing when I'm there. And like everyone's like, Gary, I break a leg. I'm like, I don't want to break a leg on stage. Thank you. I still don't understand what that means. Um, but so are you saying you performed at the Oscars with vomit breath? 150%. God, That's Rosenberg. so nice. Oh. <laughs> Imagine if someone kissed her like right after. Like, oh, you, know what? I vomit. you are out of control. <laughs> um, but like I said, I think what I've achieved so far and just kind of like doing these campaigns and endorsement deals and kind of collaborating with fashion brands and stuff like right. that. I think the only reason why I've decided to go down that route is because times are changing. And the reason why I say that is that yes, music speaks for itself, but music speaks for itself. So like you could do what you want to do and get your money by all means. But when you're putting out music, it's going to speak for itself regardless, you know? So I wouldn't say stop the checks coming in because, you know, you want to put the music out first. It's like, you know, it's about a brand and a business and kind of doing the whole 360 thing. It's very different than when we were kids, the people we yeah. looked up to who were like, if they got a check, you'd be like, oh, you're really getting a check By from the way, them? I don't know. Really now. How do you yeah. even get paid in checks? Like, well, what happens nowadays? Do, how do, do you, we, oh, deposit. Do we still get paid in checks? Some people do. You don't even know how you get paid. Yeah, you don't know how you get paid. That's another issue. <coughs> Big problem. Who's the guy who knows how you get paid? Is he Somewhere here? over there. I don't know. Uh, Let's not put him in a bulletproof vest. He walks around. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 he walks around the bulletproof vest at all times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. We have another question from Anthony. Anthony from the Bronx. Oh, there's Anthony. Hi. He's a big fan, Anthony. Thank you for coming. Congratulations. Congratulations on your baby. <laughs> okay, Anthony says, is there a rapper, in parentheses wrote male, um, that you would want to collaborate with that you have not had the chance to? Who and why? Without a doubt in my mind, it would be Kendrick Lamar. Oh, why did I know that? Because he's mage? Because he's just like, he's just one of them breaths of fresh air, and there's just no one that can do what he does. Have you guys met? Yes, we've met a few times, and I just respect him on such a level where it's like he didn't get caught up in the trap world, Right. in my opinion. He did his own thing, and we came straight to him. Like, well said. Well, you could clap point. for that. You could clap for good Kendrick. But yeah, so Kendrick, hi! I'm kidding. <laughs> that would be a good one. Right, he is Major. Do you love To Pimp a Butterfly? What's that? The album. What are you talking about? Hear you. Oh, I said, do you love Kendrick's album, To Pimp a Butterfly? Oh, of course, yeah. It's fucking crazy. I thought, I thought you said, do I pick butterflies? I was like... Well, you're a very earthy person. Do you also pick butterflies? I thought you were referring to the album, but I didn't really hear you, so I was like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take one more, and this is from Natoya from the Bronx. Hello. Oh, wow, you guys got lucky today. All right, all right. Um, do you find there's a lot of criticism in the industry, and what motivates you to keep going every day? Oh, that's a really nice question. Because, um, yeah, there's criticism, but it comes with the pros and the cons. And I think that with this kind of new rollout with my album and the way I'm kind of approaching this release, I'm trying to not get involved in that, you know? And sometimes you can't help it because people are always going to either compare you. You know, I've had it since I came out. Um, or, like, talk about your personal life more than, you know, what you do. And I think a lot of females can vouch when it's like, instead of paying respect to what you've done as a woman and what you've achieved in your life, kind of in your um, business mind or whatever you want to do with your career, people forget that because you're dating someone. And it's a bit like, instead of that being the headline, you kind of, you'd rather talk about where I had fucking Italian food yesterday. You know, and I think there's a time and a place, but I only feel like that's just what life is about. That just makes us work harder and makes us prove, us, prove ourselves more, you know? And there's nothing better than a woman sitting back at home and being like, you know what? I had a good day today. Well said. Yeah. Um, and also, I think but I, I have so much promise for and you. And male, by the way, I'm sorry. Not, not excluding the men in the room. I just think you have so much, such great potential to have a good time because at this point already, with everything you've already gone through and how, how famous you've become already, and just from getting to know you over the past year or two and seeing how regular you are, yeah. you've got a great opportunity because you'd Thank already you. be gassed. Let's be honest. You would Thanks. have already been 
whack by this point if that was going to happen. So you've managed to survive. So stupid. You've but managed it's true. to. But it's am true. I right? No. When she walked in that first day, yeah, granted, there's like 37 people no, no, there. No, no, I appreciate that. Because she's a big deal, but she acts you. super regular. No, Thank but you. the first time that I met Rita, listen, she came in, super humble, came with her guitar, sang her, had a, her heart out in the <laughs> studio, and no one even cared. They were like, who's that, who's that fine girl that's pretty? No one cares. As soon as they heard her belting out, everybody started slowly creeping around. Yeah, they like, did. Wow. We attracted that attention for the right reasons, ladies and gentlemen. For the right reasons, no. Um, we're super excited about your new project. And oh, I'm so we're just excited. We're happy to have you here. But today, it's all about the listeners. It's so all we about the make, listeners. Yeah, Thank you so much. We want to make sure that every person in here will get a photo with Rita Every single tonight. person. But also, I apologize for the delay. It was not my fault. I really... Just I'm blame, never late. Listen, blame e Ebro, guys. You know Ebro's a dick. <laughs> it was Ebro. So That's the easy way. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> But thank you for doing this. So cool. Thank and you. And you said before. I said this before you walked in. I said for everyone here, it's going to be crazy in a year that we were able to have this sort of intimate an opportunity. Yes, so exactly. And very, very I mean, well, thank you. But I hope so. And hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. Thank Everybody, you. give it up for Rita Ora. Thank you, you Cause Light, Rita Ora, Hot 97, Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg. Thank you very much. Woo!